Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Trump's request for a special master is approved. A win for Trump's lawyers in the ongoing DOJ investigation over the documents from Mar-a-Lago. The Florida district judge today granted the request. Here are the details. A small victory today for the former president. After four days of deliberation, Trump appointed Judge Eileen Cannon ruled that a special master should be appointed, though a specific person has yet to be named. This means that a third party will now review potentially sensitive documents before the Department of Justice is allowed to use the seized materials for any investigative purpose. The Trump team said during arguments that a special master was needed as a way to ensure independent neutrality in the investigation. They argued that without a special master, they're flying blind because they don't know exactly what documents the Justice Department says it has already reviewed that would be protected by claims of executive privilege or attorney-client privilege. Judge Cannon agreed to appoint the special master, saying Trump is at risk of suffering injury from the government's retention and potential use of privileged materials in the course of a process that thus far has been closed off to him. Part of what influenced her decision was the government filter team's failure to identify all potentially privileged items. Trump and Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene both commented over the weekend on the ongoing investigation. Oh, and I definitely think the upper echelon of the Department of Justice and FBI does not deserve a paycheck. Republicans in the MAGA movement are not the ones trying to undermine our democracy. We are the ones trying to save our democracy. Very simple. Judge Cannon also ordered the Justice Department to stop reviewing the records as part of its criminal investigation. But U.S. intelligence officials are allowed to continue conducting a classification review, as well as a national security damage assessment. The DOJ has argued that allowing a special master to review would slow down the investigation. Judge Cannon disagreed and has directed lawyers from both sides to submit a joint filing that includes a list of special master candidates. Talking to swing state voters, President Biden today again targets what he calls mega Republicans. It follows an anti-mega primetime speech he gave last week, which former President Trump responded to over the weekend. Here's the details. Giving a Labor Day speech in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, President Biden touts his policies to supporters in the battleground state while taking aim at Republicans. Not a single Republican congressman voted to protect your pensions. Not one. That's as he again targets so-called MAGA Republicans while adding... I want to be very clear up front. Not every Republican is a MAGA Republican. I know because I've been able to work with mainstream Republicans my whole career. But the extreme MAGA Republicans in Congress have chosen to go backwards, full of anger, violence, hate and division. The remarks follow a primetime speech last week in which Biden called MAGA Republicans is a threat to this country. Meanwhile, former President Trump denounced Biden's address over the weekend, calling it the most vicious, hateful and divisive speech ever delivered by an American president, vilifying 75 million citizens. He also, for the first time in a public address, responded to the FBI raid of his Mar-a-Lago home, calling it shameful. The shameful raid and break-in of my home, Mar-a-Lago, was a travesty of justice <laughs> that made a mockery of America's laws, traditions, and principles before the entire world. The Trump entire added world that he thought the raid would, quote, destroy Biden in the polls. And on Monday night, Biden returns to Pennsylvania for the third time in less than a week. The dueling appearances come as Labor Day marks a traditional start for a busy campaign season ahead of the midterms. This November, abortion is on the ballot in multiple states. Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in June, states have moved to either strengthen abortion rights or add new protections for the unborn. Kentucky has a trigger law restricting most abortions but it's facing lawsuits. GOP lawmakers want an amendment to the state constitution, clarifying that there is no right to abortion. In Vermont, abortion is legal at all stages of pregnancy, and voters will decide if that should be added into the state's constitution. 
California's Proposition No. 1 would make pro-abortion laws part of the state's constitution. Currently, there are some limits on late-term abortions in the state. And a referendum in Montana focuses on babies born during a failed abortion. They seek to penalize abortion providers who do not provide medical treatment. Welcome back to NTD's Capital Report. I'm Steve Lance. The Conservative Party in the UK has selected their new Prime Minister, Parliament member Liz Truss. The former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, took a tumultuous political fall and resigned from office on July 7th. NTD London correspondent Jane World joins us. Jane, Liz Truss has just been nominated to be the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. What is going to be her top priority when she gets into office? Hi, Steve. Truss, of course, inherits the same challenges that Boris Johnson had. Many of those challenges have got bigger. The energy crisis is one of those at the top of the agenda. Inflation is at a 40-year high and millions aren't able to pay their bills. So she's promised a total of $35 billion in tax cuts in the budget later this month. But it's not just the energy crisis in her entry. The war in Ukraine continues. Boris Johnson has suggested households across Europe would need to endure a rise in the cost of living to support Ukraine and counter Russia's aggression. But that's not necessarily going to go down very well. Jane, the parliamentary system in the UK is obviously different uh, from what we have here in the United States. So what comes next? Will she be meeting with the Queen? Yeah, Steve, she certainly will be. Normally, a new prime minister is invited to Buckingham Palace to be appointed by the Queen. And this tradition isn't being followed, though, actually, because it's understood the Queen is suffering from mobility issues. So instead, Truss and Boris Johnson are flying to the Queen's Balmoral Estate in Scotland, where the Queen is taking her traditional summer break. So the Queen will formally dismiss Boris Johnson, and then she will ask Liz Truss whether she will form a government. So Truss will then fly back to London to crack on with choosing her government ministers and forming her cabinet. So Truss will be the 15th prime minister to be appointed by the Queen, the first being Winston Churchill back in 1955. But going back to the results from earlier, uh, they revealed that she won 81,000 votes compared with 60,000 for former Chancellor Rishi Sunak. She was voted in by Conservative Party members, not the British public. That's because a leader needed to be appointed partway through the election cycle to replace Boris Johnson. So it's different from a general election. The next general election here will be no later than January 2025. So this trust has less than 18 months to show the voters that she means business. Two great geopolitical threats uh, for different reasons, China and Russia. Uh, how will she approach these two countries? Uh, what What's her position. Yes, Steve, it's an interesting one. Well, Liz Truss is known for her hardline position on China. She's frequently criticised the Chinese Communist Party, and it was recently reported in The Times, and that's The Times of London, not The New York Times, that she's considering labelling China a threat to national security. That's the same status as Russia. And during her campaign, Truss promised that she would publicly recognise that genocide is taking place in Xinjiang, which aligns the UK with the US and goes further than the recently published UN report. There are also informal parliamentary groups here, like the China Research Group, and there's also a group called the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China, and they will want to keep China on the new Prime Minister's agenda. With the war raging in Ukraine, China could fall down Truss's priority list with Russia taking the top spot. And political analysts expect Truss to maintain Britain's stance as one of the most active and vocal supporters of Ukraine, supplying it with weapons and training, which certainly won't sit well with Moscow, of course. Moscow was already openly criticising Truss during her visit there at the start of the year. Their foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, described their conversation as a dialogue between deaf and mute people calling her part of a new generation of superficial Western politicians. The Russian hostility may not overly worry her, may even prove useful as she sets out to prove her credentials as a strong leader facing up to Moscow over Ukraine. Jane Worrell reporting from London. OK, thanks, Steve. The U.S. ambassador to Russia, John Sullivan, is stepping down after nearly a three-year assignment. Sullivan's tenure spanned both the Trump and Biden administrations. His departure comes in the midst of an increasingly serious crisis over Russia's military operation in Ukraine and disputes over detained Americans in Russia. 
Sullivan was expected to finish his tenure as ambassador to Russia this fall, but he's bowing out early due to family medical issues. He plans to retire after a lengthy career of government service. Elizabeth Rood, the deputy chief of the U.S. mission to Russia, will be the top U.S. diplomat in Moscow until a successor replaces Sullivan. The next ambassador is expected to be nominated by President Biden. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.